yeah yeah just doing that all right thank you uh okay so uh i'll be talking uh, we have one hour with us uh okay about uh, the ankle anatomy uh, and the foot anatomy and predominantly we would be talking about the mri part right so but uh, i don't know what kind of uh, the audience uh, we have with us today i i can see that there are 190 participants i suppose there will be a lot of residents uh, which will who will be like first and second years so i'll be you know uh, for the first 15 minutes or so i'll be talking about the actual anatomy right and then head on to the uh, dicom images uh, because otherwise it won't make much sense uh, you know talking about the ligaments which you don't really know the actual anatomy what does it look like in our body uh, uh, rather than you know just seeing it on the dicom right so uh, uh, the only thing which is of importance which i uh, want all of the residents to you know note down is that you go and see your protocol call once okay in which your mri ankle is being performed in your department uh, always make sure that you have thin slices 2 to 3 mm sections not more than 3 mm uh, if possible 2 to 2.5 mm is uh, absolutely ideal and also look into one thing that is the inter slice gap should always be zero okay especially when you are doing uh, ankle and foot and wrist and all these uh, joints where you know uh, if if you have a slightly larger inter slice gap uh, a lot of ligaments will just disappear within that gap only so make sure that you have a uh, zero inter slice gap make sure you take pdfs in all the three orthogonal planes that is your uh, axial sagittal and coronal take one minimum okay these are the all bare minimum sequences that i'm talking about right now take one t1 uh, coronal image and one stir coronal and uh, three pdfs as i already told you this is like the bare minimum five sequences that we need to take uh, in today's dicom i have taken and at uh, i was you know going to show you the anatomy and a lot of anatomy is seen very well only on t1 weighted images so what i have done today is that i'll be i'll be showing you uh, the ligamentous anatomy on t1 as well as pdfs sequence okay so i have taken in all the three orthogonal planes but it is not necessary to do it like that you can always just you know uh, take three pdfs and one star coronal and one t1 coronal and you are good to go to report okay especially if you are working in a government hospital where you always have a time crunch and uh, the the scans have to be finished in a particular time limit of say 20 25 minutes so this is what you need to do okay so now coming to the anatomy i'll just minimize this okay right uh fine i'm sorry for this as well okay so as everyone knows the ankle any joint of our body has to be divided into compartments in order to understand the anatomy right so always uh, any joint of the body ankle may we will be divided dividing it into three parts basically the anterior part or the extensor part then we have the posterior part in which we have the extreme posterior then postero medial wherein we have these tom dick and harry the three tendons here and the posterolateral part okay so the coming to the first the extensor compartment we have the tibialis anterior it is a very large tendon approximately double the size of the ligament that is right beside it that is the extensor hallucis longus then again comes a large tendon that is extensor digitorum longus and then again a smaller tendon of peroneus tertius okay so this is your anterior or the extensor compartment coming to the posterolateral compartment we have two tendons that is peroneus brevis brevis b for b which is like very close to the bone and that is why this is the brevis which is closer to the bone and the longus right and they usually have a common synovial sheath they can have a different synovial sheath also variable anatomy exists then comes the biggest tendon of our body that is the tendo achilles goes and inserts over your calcaneum and uh, it does not have a tendon sheath of its own it has a paratendon so there is never 
uh, going to be a pathology of tenosynovitis of your tendo Achilles. There is always going to be paratenonitis of your tendo Achilles, right? And lastly, we have the postromedial compartment that is the tom, that is the tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, sorry, and then flexor hallucis longus, right? So the tom, dick, and hairy. How do you remember this? Okay, so TDH exists in the postromedial compartment opposite to it that is anterior followed by hallucis followed by digitorum exists on the yeah, anterior or the extensor compartment so you remember just yeah, this one yeah, thing yeah, okay yeah. and you will remember this anatomy yeah. also b for b that is bravis is approximate to the bone of the fibula that is the peroneus bravis this is peroneus longus so i think we can remember the anatomy well now right so uh, I'll quickly just rush through these origins and the insertions. The images have been taken. The illustrations have been taken from uh, the the you know the best book for MSK that is Stroller. So the, these illustrations, all the illustrations in the, uh, this presentation are taken from Stroller. Uh, so this is how the tibialis anterior, anterior originates from the proximal and mid one third of the tibia along the post along the postrolateral, uh, sorry, the entrolateral aspect and it goes and inserts, sorry, it goes and inserts on the anterior aspect of the uh, medial cuneiform and the base of the first metatarsal, okay? So it basically uh, is your dorsiflexor of the foot and it inverts the foot also, right? And it is, uh, you know, a muscle, a tendon that gets injured in hikers, because of the constant dorsiflexion uh, that, uh, uh, you know, especially in during the descent of any hiking that takes place. Then comes your extensor hallucis longus. It goes and inserts. Hallucis is the big toe, right? So it goes and inserts in the uh, distal phalanx at the base. And it originates somewhere here in the middle one third, okay, of the fibula and the introsseous membrane. And extensor digitorum longus, it originates, you know, it has a very extensive origin. It goes like way up to the tibia and the proximal part of the fibula and then over, you know, the introsseous membrane. And finally, it divides into four slips and inserts over your uh, the uh, middle and the distal phalanx bases, okay, of your second to fifth toes. It again is the dorsiflexor of your ankle. Peroneus tertius, it represents the lateral slip of your extensor digitorum longus and isolated ruptures do not usually happen. It again is a dorsiflexor and an everter of your foot. Now coming to the posterior compartment, the superficial part, we have the gastronemius and the soleus that together form your tendo Achilles and the plantaris muscle. And then the deep uh, component, uh, the deep uh, compartment wherein we have the tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorum longus. So the gastronemius is basically traversing two, uh, like two joints of our body, okay? It originates over your medial femoral and the lateral femoral condyle along the postro uh, medial and postrolateral aspects. And then it forms this huge muscle belly, followed by which this really strong looking tendon and it goes and inserts over your calcaneum, okay? So it flexes your knee, and also causes the plantar flexion of your foot, okay? Basically, it traverses two joints. As against that, soleus. Soleus is, you know, uh, it's again a plantar flexor of the foot because it or, uh, inserts along with your gastronemius over the ex uh, superior part of the calcaneum. And it originates over this entire area, you know, this big uh, origin on the postrolateral aspect of the tibia, this postromedial aspect of the fibula and some part of the introsseous membrane also, right? And so among whenever there is, you know, immobilization in any case of a fracture of your tibia or of your ankle joint, basically, then there will be soleus atrophy that happens really quick, okay? Gastronemius does not really undergo such kind of atrophy. Then plantaris is a small muscle arising from the postrolateral aspect of your femur and then it forms a very long tendon, long slender tendon and it inserts on the postromedial aspect of your superior aspect of the calcaneum. Okay. Now comes your FHL. So FHL is basically a flexor of your great toe. Okay. And it also plantar flexes the foot, but it's a very weak plantar flexor of 
of the foot all the three deep uh, compartment tendons are weak plantar flexors and they have major action only at the level of the phalanges right so plantar flexor of the uh, big toe is your flexor hallucis longus sorry sorry yeah flexor digitorum longus has a very big origin in the middle one third of the tibia and then it divides into four slips and inserts into the second to the fifth toe okay and lastly the tibialis posterior is again a very bulky large muscle it uh, basically arises from the uh, as we can see here from the posterolateral aspect of tibia and the fibula and it crosses over uh, it basically is uh, lying you know medial to your neurovascular bundle and then it has these multipinnate in um, uh, sorry multiple insertions not multipinnate it has multiple insertions small insertions the most predominant one is over the navicular bone but it again gives slips to the rest of the cuneiforms and the bases of the second third and the fourth metatarsal so it has a very variable anatomy about you know the tibialis posterior insertion but the biggest insertion is in your navicular bone now coming to the lateral compartment we have the peroneus longus and the brevis tendons uh, peroneus longus is known as longus because it has a very long tendon okay it is a very bulky muscle as well and it has a very long slender tendon then it goes into the sole of the foot it uh, you know it passes here at the level of the you know uh, at the level of the calcaneum we have this tuberosity the peroneal tuberosity it uh, it cross this it and it goes into the sole of the foot it passes through the tunnel of the cuboid bone and then it goes and inserts over the base of the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform bone right so it is basically an everter of your foot then comes your peroneus brevis it's called brevis because it has a shorter tendon as compared to the longest one and it goes and inserts at the base of the fifth metatarsal now coming to you know i i know that we all know a bit of the tendinous anatomy in because you know uh, we do remember it uh, uh, from our ug days also but ligaments is something that is uh, uh, very complex and so uh, coming to the ligaments they are again divided into uh, two main compartments that is the lateral ligament complex and our deltoid ligament complex right so laterally basically we have the uh, even you know you can even divide it into the tibio fibular and basically your extensor compartment i'll just show you a diagram okay so this is basically your distal most tibia getting attached to that of the fibula by this obliquely oriented thick strong ligament this is your antero inferior tibio fibular ligament o originates from the tibia and goes to the fibula obliquely oriented at around 45 degree angle okay as against that we have the anterior talofibular ligament that connects the lateral medullus to the anterior aspect of the talus right so this anterior talofibular is a very weak ligament it is usually divided into superior and inferior bands they may be separately visualized they may not be separately visualized in many individuals again a variable anatomy so uh, so these two anterior tibiofibular and anterior talofibular are what you see in the axial sections of your mri as against that the lateral ligament complex is formed of three ligaments that is your anterior talofibular calcaneofibular and posterior talofibular right so these three are a part of your lateral ligament complex now anteriorly we have this extensor retinaculum there are two bands this is the superior band of the extensor retinaculum which is you know supramedullary in uh, in location and it kind of binds your uh, extensor tendons that is tibialis anterior extensor hallucis and extensor digitorum longus so that they don't really slip out of their place and inferior to it we have this y shaped uh, inferior extensor retinaculum and this band of y is going and attaching in your or calcaneum just anterior to your uh, uh, this uh, peroneal tendons okay this inferior extensor retinaculum also forms a part of your sinus tarsi which i'll be talking later in the lecture now coming to the medial ligament complex is basically your deltoid ligament complex uh, it is you know very difficult to remember but i'll make it easy for you to remember in a way that 
the medial malleolus goes and attaches to the talus to the calcaneus and to the navicular bone right so it has to be divided into components which are tibio teller okay so this is posterior tibio teller this is anterior tibio teller then there is tibio calcaneal okay which goes and attaches from tibia to the calcaneus then there is tibio navicular navicular is located anteriorly right so it is the anterior part that is your tibio navicular ligament and lastly we have the tibio spring ligament wherein there is a strong ligament that goes and attaches to the spring ligament or the calcaneo navicular ligament this complex is known as the tibio spring ligament so this is how you remember your deltoid ligament complex what is how do we remember it i'll repeat it again the medial malleolus goes and attaches to the talus so we have the anterior and the posterior tibio teller then the tibia goes and attaches to the calcaneum so we have the tibio calcaneal and it goes and attaches to the navicular so we have the tibio navicular and then it goes and attaches and gives a slip to the spring ligament so this is your tibio spring okay am i clear with this anatomy now again uh, this was one sort of a division now we have the deltoid ligament which is being divided into superficial and deep part so the triangular superficial part is basically formed of the tibio navicular anterior fibers that i showed you and the tibio calcaneal fibers which are little posteriorly located and also the superficial part of your posterior tibio teller you need not remember this you know it's not very very important you just remember the kind of classification that i showed you okay and the deep part is basically composed of your small anterior component of the anterior tibio teller and strong posterior part of your posterior tibio teller right now comes your flexor retinaculum again it has two bands uh sorry the, this is the uh, single band of your flexor retinaculum all your flexor tendons the tibialis posterior flexor digitorum and flexor hallucis will pass uh below this flexor retinaculum and the lateral ligament complex which i already showed you once okay i'll repeat it again how to remember it is this fibula fibula attaching to the end talus along the anterior aspect then it is the anterior talus fibula along the posterior aspect then it is posterior talus fibula and then the the fibula attaching to the calcaneum so it is a calcaneo fibular ligament it is more vertically oriented right ptfl is a very strong sort of a ligament and uh, it does not usually get torn as a compared to atfl which gets torn way more frequently and the CFL is one of the largest of the collateral ligaments and it is a strong cord like structure fine it is located deep to your peroneus longus and brevis okay uh, now muscles in the foot i'll be covering it later because i know you will absolutely forget it uh, uh, before i show you the dicom files so we'll switch back to that later on okay now coming to the ligaments uh, of the foot uh, first i like to you know uh show you the bony anatomy in a way that you remember it okay so this is the four foot four foot is basically your metatarsals and the phalanges which are located anterior to it then we have the mid foot mid foot wherein we have the navicular bone which is articulating with the medial cuneiform the intermediate cuneiform and the lateral cuneiform which is in turn articulating with your first second and the third metatarsal bases so navicular and the three cuneiform this forms a part of your midfoot and so does your cuboid bone okay so 1 2 3 4 5 these five bones are a part of your midfoot and finally the hind foot is basically just two bones that is the talus and the calcaneus right so this is how you have the uh division Uh, of forefoot midfoot and hindfoot Hello. so now we need ligaments that connect Hello. the midfoot to the forefoot for which we have all of these innominate sort of dorsal tarso metatarsal ligaments there are uh, you know all the bones have to be attached to each other in a way right so these are the innominate sort of ligaments also we have this very important lis frank ligament wherein we have the uh, this ligament extends from the medial cuneiform bone to the base of your second metatarsal right so this is your dorsal lis frank ligament lis frank has three components okay this is what i already showed you the dorsal lis frank uh this thing uh ligament this is the introsius uh 
less frank ligament and this is the plantar less frank ligament there is a small slip that goes to your uh, intermediate cuneiform also okay so but just remember these three things that the less frank is basically attaching your medial cuneiform to the base of the second metatarsal and this is how it connects your midfoot to your forefoot right there will be these small innominate uh, sort of dorsal intermetatarsal ligaments where the base of the metatarsals get connected to each other okay then one more ligament complex that attaches your uh, hind foot to your midfoot will be the talo navicular ligament okay very simple to remember talus and navicular so this is your talo navicular ligament then there is this little complex bifurcate ligament it is by very uh, you know the name is very uh, non uh, you know explain self explanatory that it has two bands how do we remember it uh, this is the calcaneum uh, superior uh, the dorsal aspect okay from here when a ligament goes and attaches to the navicular bone then this is your medial limb or the medial limb of the bifurcate ligament which is nothing but your calcaneo navicular ligament okay and this is your dorsal calcaneo cuboid ligament right and just in uh, you can see it in the sagittal section here you know that this ligament that goes and connects your calcaneum to the cuboid along the plantar aspect will be your plantar calcaneo cuboid ligament now these three ligaments that is the bifurcate ligament the dorsal calcaneo cuboid and the plantar calcaneo cuboid they are uh, you know the components of your show part ligament complex okay and we also have this this is your dorsal talo navicular ligament fine now comes your calcaneo navicular ligament this is the self explanatory name as uh, as i told, already told you this is your sustentat culum talli of your calcaneum from here arises a ligament that goes and attaches to the calcaneum along the superior aspect right so this is the supromedial part of your calcaneo navicular ligament then this is your intermediate part and this is your lateral or inferior part of your calcaneo navicular ligament the most impact, important one of these three is your supromedial calcaneo navicular ligament to which your tibio spring ligament that i already told you in the deltoid ligament complex goes and attaches to right so this is what you need to remember supromedial calcaneo navicular ligament now last slide is this sinus tarsi wherein we have the three components one that i already told you this is the inferior band of your extensor retinaculum along the lateral most aspect then this vertically oriented cervical ligament and this slightly you know obliquely oriented interosseous talocalcaneal ligament right so i think we are done with a lot of ligament anatomy of the ankle and the foot which was the you know very important uh, basis before uh, understanding the dichom images okay oh, okay i hope everything was audible till now okay now uh, we are going to the dichom images okay so there is a certain protocol uh, that we need to follow when we are looking at uh, any joint in the body so that we don't end up forgetting certain structures right so what i always do is i begin with uh, the sagittal images i'll be opening up the pdfs sagittal and t1 sagittal images here fine and what do we do here is the most important thing always look at the tendo achilles first you know there was one instance where i had you know forgotten to see tendo achilles as a chota chota ligament dekh liya and i forgot to see tendo achilles okay so don't uh, make that mistake look at the long the la the strongest tendon of our body has to be you know not overlooked look at tendo achilles look at it in a way that uh, we have the anterior and the posterior border they should be you know almost parallel to each other there should be no anterior uh, bulging of your tendo achilles you know they are the initial signs of uh, having uh, tendonitis of your tendo achilles also trace it up to the level of the insertion you might see some areas of uh, near fluid signal intensity here at times okay you but it is still just your insertion tendinosis it may appear like tear but it is not tear it, it is very much 
fluid intense uh, signal but it is just your insertional tendinosis there can be non insertional tendinosis which will be seen somewhere here in this uh, distal most part now coming to the tendo achilles you see your uh, kegger's fat pad look whether there is any sort of an edema here or not also look at any sort of an abnormal bump here in the calcaneum right to look for any hagland's deformity okay then go and look in the posterior ankle joint recess you will always find some amount of fluid here don't uh, you need not report it as you know minimal fluid seen in the posterior ankle joint recess does not really make sense it's always there right also okay so i think we are done with this particular area now let us go to the bones okay go to the uh, distal tibia and your talus this is your talo tibial articulation uh always browse from the lateral most aspect to the medial aspect okay keep looking at your talar dome to see if there is any abnormality there or not there is no abnormality there the uh, you know the bones are fairly congruous to each other then comes your anterior most aspect of the tibia look whether there is any large marginal osteophyte here that can be a cause of your anterior ankle impingement if there is any bump here on the anterior aspect of the talus right so that will rule out your anterior ankle impingement also now go and look at your talo navicular articulations this small dark band that you see here will be your talo dorsal talo navicular ligament that i told you in the show part ligament complex right so in degenerative foot and ankle you will find some amount of degeneration here in the talonavicular joint uh, there will be fluid bulging out here mention that in your report then goes your navicular bone which goes and articulates with your we are in the medial most sections so this is your medial cuneiform we are going more medially now we are coming more laterally so this will be your intermediate cuneiform bone and this will be your lateral cuneiform bone okay all the three of them are articulating with that of the navicular bone look at it look at the articulations properly then comes your cuboid here right cuboid articulating with the bases of the fourth and the fifth metatarsals here so any sort of an osteoarthritic changes here would be you know at the articulation of your midfoot and your forefoot mention that in your report if you find any then comes your calcaneo cuboid articulation uh this is the anterior process of your calcaneus okay and here attaches your sorry this this large band that goes from the calcaneus and to your navicular bone this is your bifurcate ligament medial limb right and then when you come a little more laterally here you will be able to see some ligamentous structure here not very well appreciated in this case yeah here yeah this is your dorsal calcaneo cuboid ligament okay in this very plane when we are here this is the ligament that connects your calcaneum to your cuboid so this is your plantar calcaneo cuboid ligament uh, why am i telling you here is that shopar joint injuries are very common that is your midfoot sprains and in these sprains the there is a fracture here along the anterior process of your calcaneus and you will find edema here at the attachment of the talus of of your navicular bone also so this is classic of your medial limb by of the bifurcate ligament injury with edema at the either ends there can be a chip fracture again here also right so or, always look at this area very carefully now coming to the sinus tarsi here on t1 weighted images we can very well see the kind of fat that is present inside here okay so now we'll go to the lateral most section and here this is the inferior extensor reticulum right which is a part of your sinus tarsi now we are coming more medially and we see these ligaments here okay this is your 
टेलो कैलकेनियर लिगामेंट ओके इंट्रोशियस टेलो कैलकेनियर एंड दीज आर द फाइबर्स ऑफ योर सर्वाइकल लिगामेंट इफ यू है ऑब्लिट्रेशन ऑफ फैट हियर देर इज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ स्क्लोरोसिस हियर देन इट पॉइंट्स आउट टू वर्ड्स योर साइनस्टार साई सिंड्रो फाइन नाउ वॉट एल्स वी आर सपोज टू बी लुकिंग एट इज योर प्लांट ऑफ एशिया plantar fascia attachments at the medial and the lateral calcaneal tuberosities this is the medial calcaneal tuberosity we are going more laterally we have the lateral calcaneal tuberosity and any sort of an edema here any large calcaneal spur any abnormal signal here would point out towards your plantar fasciitis fine now i think we are done with almost all the structures that we need to see in your ankle in the sagittal section okay yeah one more thing so, sorry uh, the talo calcaneal articulation talus articulates with the calcaneus at three facets okay the largest of the facets this is your posterior talo calcaneal facet uh, many a times you see fibrous coalitions at this level okay the posterior talo calcaneal joint this is your middle facet is not able to see the video oh oh i hope everybody is able to see okay and now we have this middle facet at the talo calcaneal articulation fine and lastly the anterior most facet that is here okay this is your anterior talo calcaneal articulation all the three articulations have to be looked out very carefully to look for any coalition and any sort of degenerative changes okay no audio re baap re no audio is very well clearly audible okay 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 great great thank you okay thank you fine now uh, going to the next section that is your axial sequence we'll be taking up the axial sequence on uh, pdfs and t1 weighted images again okay now we are at the superior most section at uh, at this level you will be able to see we will be first uh, looking at the ligamentous anatomy okay, sorry the tendinous uh, anatomy so along the extensor respect we have this tibialis anterior tendon which we will trace down further and it goes and inserts in your major cuneiform bone any sort of a bump here it is better visualized on the coronal sequences there would be a higher chance of it undergoing uh, tendinosis and partial tear at the level of the insertions okay then the next the tendon which is half the size of the tendo of the tibialis anterior which is your extensor hallucis longus which goes on more distally to go and insert at the level of the i'm sorry i don't have the foot uh, sequence uh, sorry the fov is not that big you know it should never be kept that big uh, so that we include the ankle and the foot in the same uh, you know uh, sequence uh, so we should ideally be tracing it uh, if the patient has a complaint you know where you find that there is something wrong uh, with the insertions then yes you should take a separate foot mr as well in that patient and look for the insertion at the level of the big toe and this is the uh, deep peroneal uh, nerve which is right below your extensor hallucis longus uh, tendon and then we have this extensor digitorum longus that goes and divides into the slips and just below it we have the extensor digitorum brevis muscle okay which is a intrinsic muscle of the foot it arises from the foot and inserts also within the foot so yes all the all of the all of these structures will uh, go and insert in the uh, in the distal phalanx of your second to fifth toes now coming to the posterolateral compartment we, we have the peroneus longus and the brevis tendons right so this is the peroneus brevis we are tracking it down further and we will be able to visualize it getting inserted at the base of the fifth metatarsal here 
and the other tendon that is the peroneus longus we'll be tracing it further into the sole of the foot right here it passes through the tunnel of the cuboid and it goes and inserts in the base of the fifth metatarsal here right so this is your tendon of peroneus longus also go and look for the tendo achilles of course at the insertion within the calcaneum and this small tendon here that is your plantaris on the medial aspect right now coming to the posteromedial aspect we have the three tendons that is the tibialis posterior here it has multiple insertions the biggest one is at the level of the navicular bone okay we can see it here going and inserting here and it gives a slip again to the base of the medial cuneiform also then this is the flexor digitorum longus now we have to look at one particular thing that is the flexor hallucis longus which is the posterior most one and the middle one that is the flexor digitorum longus flexor hallucis has to go and insert at the base of the first toe right so it has to kind of cross over the flexor uh, digitorum longus and this crossover that happens here is known as the knot of henry okay flexor digitorum goes like this and inserts at the base of the fourth uh, the second to the fourth uh, phalanges whereas the flexor hallucis goes like this and inserts at the base of the big toe so this crossover which is happening in the sole of the foot is known as the uh, henry's knot any sort of a ganglionic cyst can form here at this level because of the friction and can further irritate the uh, medial plantar nerve here now lastly okay now we will come to the ligamentous anatomy so in the superior most section here we have this ligament that attaches the sorry the tibia and the fibula here you know it is not very well visualized here but here here we can see that a thick band is there this is your tib anterior inferior tibio fibular ligament it is a very strong ligament not torn very easily now we are coming further down and we see this one small band that is attaching the fibula to that of the talus okay and we are further going down it disappears and then it comes back right this it comes back again so this is the very uh, certain cases which i told you where you can see two separate bands of anterior talofibular is this particular case wherein you can see two bands of the anterior talofibular at this level again at the level of the inferior band of the anterior talofibular you will be able to see this is the inferior band of anterior talofibular at this level itself you will be able to see this posterior talofibular you will always find some amount of uh, you know heterogeneous hyper intense appearance on uh, pdfs sequences but this is absolutely normal this is just because of the orientation of your uh, ligament is in such a way that it because of the magic angle it appears hyper intense it is absolutely normal uh, even like this okay so this is the posterior talofibular so, and here only at this stage where you can see the posterior talofibular we come here at the level of the taylor neck and we are further going down this is the <laughs> supramedial band of your talo navicular ligament <laughs> here the cord the la sorry the calcaneo navicular ligament the this is your supramedial <laughs> calcaneo <laughs> navicular <laughs> ligament or the spring ligament <laughs> okay <laughs> so how do we remember it always trace it at the level of your posterior talofibular you go anteriorly and you'll be able to see a jet black structure here going from the sorry second yeah going like this and inserting on the on the navicular bone so this is your supramedial calcaneo navicular ligament fine now uh in axial section also one has to look for in if fluid like this in the anterior and the posterior joint recesses also look at the talonavicular articulation the articulation of the navicular bone with the three cuneiforms 
this is the peroneal tuberosity here if it is enlarged it can impinge on the peroneus longus tendon and can lead to uh, peroneal uh, the you know tendinosis of your peroneus longus tendon and can lead to a tear also okay i think we are done with this as well ha ah, this is the list frank ligament that we need to see here that is attaching the medial cuneiform bone to the base of the second metatarsal okay so this is the dorsal this frank ligament fine now coming to the coronal sections okay so the most important structure that we didn't really see uh, till now in either axial or sagittal one the sections was the deltoid ligament so this is where your deltoid ligament will lie right between the medial medullus and your talus so we have this rectangular sort of a structure in the deepest part and it appears very you know heterogeneous even on t1 weighted images it appears you know mildly it's like iso intense to your marrow it is because of the synovial fat which is there just like acl also has it at the level of the tbl attachment even deltoid deep uh, part has some amount of synovial fat and again it is in an orientation in a way in which there is magic angle happening and that is why it appears so hyper intense on your tdfs sequence so please don't report it as a tear it always normally also appears like this so this is the deep compartment of your deltoid that is the anterior and the posterior tbo talus okay now we are coming more anteriorly and we see a ligament like this you know this thin ligament that is arising from the medial malleolus okay and it is going and attaching to the spring ligament and then it forms this sling here on which this head of the talus rests so this is the supramedial calcano navicular or the spring ligament and this is the tbo spring ligament okay and this is the sling that it forms for the head of the talus to rest on this band here is your tbo calcaneal ligament which is again a part of a superficial part of your deltoid okay fine now we have the lateral compartment that is the calcaneo fibular ligament which we didn't really see in any of the sequences before why t1 because i wanted to show you the anatomy okay you want me to repeat the ligaments in the cell section i'm sure i'll do that again t1 is just because we are able to see the anatomy more appropriately and that is why i have taken all of these sections uh, you need not really do it in your practice okay and i suppose you had asked about the deltoid the deltoid appearing hyper intense on t1 that is because of the fat the synovial fat which is there within the deep fibers please repeat deltoid sure sorry you come to this section okay wherein you find the talus and the medial malleolus and this large bulk of structure here okay so this is your deep part of your deltoid ligament complex it normally appears like this the deep part that is your anterior and the posterior tibio talus as against that we have the superficial part wherein this is the tibio spring okay arising from the medial malleolus and attaching to the spring ligament or the cal supramedial calcaneo navicular ligament okay this forms the sling where the head of the talus will rest okay and lastly we have this tibio calcaneal ligament where that appears and that appears hyper intense no it is the fat it is the fat which is there the synovial fat is there within the ligament itself and that is why it appears hyper intense on t1 weighted images it is not the fluid how can fluid appear bright on t1 right it goes against the principle of our uh, mri imaging only right it is the fat i wish i can uh, i should have opened up a knee also a knee in knee joint okay your anterior cruciate ligament at the level of the tbl attachment has a very broad 
fan shaped appearance and it has those uh, synovial fat within the fibers and that is why it appears hyper intense just like deltoid okay so this is the normal appearance i'll show you one more sagittal section wherein uh, in this particular case the posterior tibio teller is seen very well you see this fan here this is the medial malleolus tip and this is the posterior aspect of your talus so this is your posterior tibio teller you see this here this large band okay is there one more chart that i have missed on okay i have not missed on anything fine you see this band here this is your posterior tibio teller ligament you if you are lucky you are able to see it very well like this you know you need not always see the ligaments very very well the, especially the normal ligaments okay anteriorly sorry this is the anterior part maybe okay this beautiful see okay good chalo thank you itna dikh gaya na tumko but see whenever there is a uh, deltoid ligament injury first of all you have to ask the patient what kind of an injury the patient has undergone okay there will be some amount of marrow edema here at the level of the medial malleolus there will be edema here at the talus also right all of these features should be there in order to you know uh, stamp it as deltoid ligament injury right so i i hope i have been clear this is the tibio spring tibio navicular is further more anteriorly seen okay so this band sort of a structure that goes and inserts in the navicular bone okay sorry they are all like very parallelly associated with each other you know so you don't uh, exactly see them in many cases okay but this is the superficial part itna samajh gaye na this is superficial part this is the deep part of your deltoid okay and you should be able to see that sling that i already showed you where the head of the talus rests fine uh okay now i i have to kind of show you the foot uh, anatomy the muscle anatomy okay we have very little time left we will be overshooting a bit but ek second i will show you the ppt first so that you know a bit of the anatomy when i show it to you on your foot mr okay so the muscles are basically extensor aspect we have just one big muscle that we need to remember that is the extensor digitorum brevis whereas in the sole of the foot it is basically comprised of four layers okay so the first layer is the abductor hallucis flexor digitorum brevis abductor digiti minimi how do you remember it so that ke beech ka jo hai the biggest bulk is flexor digitorum brevis medial to it we have the abductor hallucis lateral to it we have the abductor digiti minimi second layer is the quadratus plantae and the lumbricals The third layer is flexor hallucis brevis. Am I how to decide? There? I'll, I, uh, you know, uh, I'll give you my email ID. We'll we can discuss this later uh, on because ACL is not a part of this uh, thing, right? So second second we have the quadratus plantae and the lumbricus. The third layer is flexor hallucis brevis, which forms the sismoids at your big toe. abductor hallucis and flexor digiti minimi brevis these are very small muscles of you know very little importance because they were important when we were a four legged uh, animal you know but now as humans we don't really need uh, these muscles to be used these are vestigial uh, muscles and lastly the introsia okay so quickly i'll just show you the extensor digitorum brevis okay arises from the uh, navicular bone along the extensor aspect and then it goes and forms these uh, small slips which inserts along with your extensor digitorum longus okay then the first layer of the sole of the foot usme medial muscle is your abductor hallucis arising from the medial aspect of the calcaneus and inserts over the medial aspect of the uh, proximal phalanx the first proximal phalanx flexor digitorum brevis as i told you the beech ka muscle that you always remember the fdb flexor digitorum brevis arising from the middle aspect of the calcaneum and giving these four slips to the four toes 
and this is the abductor digiti mini me abductor so it kind of abducts your uh, little toe it goes and inserts at the lateral aspect of the proximal phalanx okay then comes the second layer that is your quadratus plantae it is exactly below your flexor digitorum brevis then the lumbricals lumbricals arise from your these flexor tendons okay the slips of your flexor digitorum longus and then it inserts on the medial aspect of the consecutive or of the respective second to fifth toes okay yahan se arise hua yahan pe attach ho jayega fifth ka right this is your lumbrical then comes your flexor hallucis brevis it arises from your uh, cuboid bone okay and the lateral cuneiform and goes and inserts in the it basically gives these two slips okay the sesamoid bones the medial and the lateral sesamoid are the sesamoid bones within these tendon slips okay and the flexor sorry the flexor hallucis longus passes between these two sesamoid bones to attach at the level of the base of the distal phalanx here okay so this is where is your flexor hallucis longus this is your flexor hallucis brevis the adductor hallucis has two origins i mean it has two heads and it inserts on the medial aspect of your first proximal phalanx along the lateral aspect adductor hallucis then the flexor digiti minimi brevis again goes and inserts along the lateral aspect of your fifth proximal phalanx then your introsii the last layer of the sole of the foot they are plantar as well as dorsal introsii they are basically of importance only when there is you know some stress fracture has happened and you need to mention that yes there is edema in the intermuscular plane within the sole fourth layer of the sole of the foot okay uh, there are no many pathologies in this level okay now i'll be quickly showing you those images okay of the sole of the foot fine so how do we go about looking at the sole of the foot is by looking at the coronal sections okay so somewhere here at the level of the origin of your uh, okay let's let's talk about here right so this is your flexor digitorum brevis this is your abductor hallucis this is your abductor digiti minimi these will form the first layer of the sole of the foot right now just deep to it will be your quadratus plantae here okay one pathology that i always want to uh, you know emphasize on is the baxter's neuropathy wherein you will have isolated atrophy of your abductor digiti minimi this is like a spotter and a lot of clinicians kind of miss it on your mrs so please always make it a point to look at the abductor digiti minimi muscle it's not a very common pathology but it is very fairly commonly missed sort of a pathology so this is your peroneus longus okay it goes and inserts it passes through your cuboid bone and it goes and inserts in the first metatarsal base here this is the henry's knot that i want to show you the crossover of the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis longus this crossover that just happened here okay fine so ek ke ek ke upar niche se jo nikalte hai na that is where the friction can happen okay and the abductor sorry the flexor hallucis brevis sorry flexor hallucis brevis will be here in the third layer of the sole of the foot okay in which there will be the tendons the sorry the sesamoid bones will be there okay i have another mr basically of the foot to show it to you i'll just share that this is all you need to know in the sole of the foot okay not it is not very very extensive that we the anatomy is very complex but in uh, clinically what you need to remember is basically always look at these two sesamoid bones whether there is any sort of an uh, edema or any fracture or there is sesamoiditis that has happened okay this is a flexor hallucis longus tendon that passes through these two sesamoid bones 
okay also wanted to show you the adductor hallucis which we see here this this is the second head or the horizontal head of your adductor hallucis that goes and inserts in the base of your uh, sorry in the head of the first metatarsal okay this one this is your horizontal part of your adductor hallucis somewhere here will be your adductor digiti minimi they are not very important so i'm not even you know uh, very much concerned about them and these are their introsciae at the level of your metatarsal bones okay the these are the dorsal and these are the plantar introsciae okay i think we are done with the lecture i think we are done with the lecture um i know you have been taking the uh, questions simultaneously yeah. uh, but uh, would you like to just put an i on the uh, q and a section sure sure if something is something you want to talk more about oh uh, i uh uh just that uh, i don't really know what to you know add on here i think we are done I, if we have any doubts uh yeah so there are questions in q and a ah yeah sure 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 uh, okay uh, uh, sorry please repeat the ah subject one sure 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 i'll just do that mm.